What is going on guys? Jim from Import Image Racing and welcome back to the channel. If you've been keeping up to date with our VA build at all, you know we've been doing some pretty cool aesthetic mods to this thing. We have done some Cosmos XT005R wheels, we've done the Silver's Neomax coilovers, and we've done a whole bunch of stuff to the rear end of this car. And just like a mullet, it's been all party in the back. So we have done exhaust, we did the rear diffuser, we did the tag frame bucket. And if you missed any of that, we will drop a link in the description below so you can get up to speed. It's time to bring this party to the front of the vehicle. I really like the way this car looks. It's very clean. I do have the noble gloss black JDM style front lip on there, but something else is just missing. We have done so much to the rear of this car. It's time to kind of spice up what we have. So to be a little bit more specific about what we're doing today, take a look at what's on the table. Uh, nothing too crazy, but you know, I've had enough of the factory grill. It does look good. We do have an emblem on there to kind of spice things up, but I definitely wanted to go a little bit further. So for starters, I have my gloss black JDM style uh, grill from Noble, which I think is going to be really cool and it's really going to help kind of see through the grill. Uh, and also nothing says I love modifying my car and I'm a hot boy more than a gigantic bright pink x brace and if that's not hot boy enough for you i have this cool little wrx badge right here and it's not only any wrx badge it is a lit logo badge which is a really cool thing uh spencer from lit logos came down a couple of weeks ago we did an install video on a new gr86 and just from talking to him and seeing how cool that thing was in real life i was like you know what i think i need a little bit more flair on the front of this vehicle oh yeah and just in case you're wondering I'm a LaCroix drinker, so, you know, take that as you will. All in all, none of this stuff is going to be very difficult to install, and you could definitely do this in your garage, in your driveway, with some basic handles. I have, uh, you know, the help of some ramps that I'm going to pull this thing up on so I can get a little bit uh, easier access underneath the car. But all in all, it really just takes a handful of screws, a handful of bolts, and you can have the front end of this car off and apart pretty easy. But before we start yanking this thing apart, why don't you take a look at the front of the car and we'll give you a good before look at it. Yeah, did you guys like that? Carbon fiber hood struts, we got them on there too. That was a quick and easy thing that I just couldn't pass up. I think that these things are really cool. Uh, they look the part, they're super cheap. And I mean, if this is just, if you're into that carbon fiber look, wow, uh, you know, literally the cheapest carbon fiber thing you can do that's not stick on. But for getting our bumper off, the first thing we're gonna wanna do we're going to be taking our 10 millimeter bolts and clip hardware off of the top here. And then once we do that, we'll kind of work our way down into the fender well. Uh, we'll remove the clips here just by kind of yanking on it. And we'll get all of our hardware out and get the bumper off as fast as possible. There we have it, the bumper is off. Nothing too crazy here, nothing to write home about uh, because this particular car doesn't come equipped with fog lights. We didn't have to worry about disconnecting any harnesses there. So like I said, just a couple of bolts and hardware up top, a few push pins and things like that that we got with our tools underneath. And you can just kind of pull the clip and then the whole bumper comes off. With the bumper on the table, let's kind of come around to the backside and see what we're working with uh, to replace our factory grill with our Noble JDM grill. This isn't bad either. Once you have everything off, there's a handful of like Phillips head screws on the top and on the bottom. The rest of the grill is just held on with these plastic clips that we can just push with our thumb and it will push the grill out the front side. Now, as far as our bright pink X brace. Uh, if we come back over to the car and take a look, you'll notice that uh, the previous owner has put in a 
wonderful set of hella horns. Now, this is a very classic look, and a lot of people enjoy this particular look and the sound and everything that comes along with hella horns. Uh, but for my particular taste for this particular car, I, um, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. What I think I might end up doing is removing the hella horn and the bracket. Then I might just chase the harness depending on if they use the plug and play harness or where that goes. And I might end up actually just replacing the factory horn over here or potentially running it in series or in line with that but not in our main grill area. I think I'm going to be kind of relocating that outside so I get all of the benefits of the sound of the hella horns but you won't just be kind of looking at it and it's not going to scream at you um, in your rearview mirror. So here's a look at the hardware that they give you. Uh, it's a 10 millimeter head, but it also has the ability to have a Phillips head screwdriver. And if you can tell, the hole that these go in are very small and tiny. And you know, my 10 millimeter socket will most likely fit in there. But I, you know, when I go to tighten it up, I don't want to like kind of gouge out or scratch up any of the uh, inside of this barrel. So what I'm going to do is actually apply a small amount of blue Loctite to my threads and then use a Phillips head screwdriver to snug these up. And then once everything dries and seals, it should be on there pretty good without having to over tighten or over torque the hardware. Finally, for our last piece of hardware on the bottom passenger side, there is a hole there, but it is the only one that is non-threaded in my application. So Nova provides you with not only the bolt, but the nuts as well. In my particular application, I didn't have to use the nut for any of the other three. There's really only this piece of hardware. There we go. Looking pretty faint. With our X brace in, we're gonna move back over to our bumper, remove our Phillips head screws here, and then push out our grill to the front. Since we're here, let's compare the two grills. Uh, they do have some similarities, yet they are quite different. As you can see, this is the gloss black JDM grill from Noble. Very similar honeycomb, a little bit tighter weave in here, but I think two main differences. Number one, our JDM grill doesn't have this long bar that kind of goes across and blocks your view from behind the grill. Uh, it's nice and wide open. Also, where our factory grill has a badge and emblem here, this one does too, but you can flip it over and you can actually move it or remove it all you want. So we can take our screws, we can pull this out, and then it can be a complete badgeless grill. So no need for an emblem, which is what I think we're gonna run today. I just kind of, you know, since I bought the pink bar, I wanna be able to see everything behind here. And then with my lit logo over here, that's gonna kinda bring even more color at nighttime. Oh yeah, one other thing. Our JDM replica grill also has a spot you can push out for if you have a factory front camera, just like our factory grill. But this particular model does not have a front camera, but if I ever wanted to put a front camera in, we can push that thing out. Or if I want to do, you know, who knows, some nitrous or whatever like that and just kind of have the little psh, psh, psh come out through here, I think that'd be pretty cool too. I don't think enough guys are running nitrous. You want to run nitrous? You want to see some nitrous? Eh, probably not. Anyway. Just a word of the whys here. As you can see, these are very tiny Phillips head, but coarse screws. And since we are going in to plastic anchors here, you definitely have the ability to over torque or over tighten and either strip out the hole that we're putting the screw in and or potentially damage or compromise the visible side of the grill on the other side. This doesn't take a whole lot of cranking down or rocket science. Really, as you tighten it, once this washer here starts to make contact, I mean a little bit more of a turn and you'll feel it kind of snug up and that's about it. Uh, because it's coarse thread into plastic, it's very unlikely for this to kind of loosen up over time. It's gonna get set in there and then it's gonna be you know, as tight as it's gonna be for a long time. So so just make sure you don't over torque this thing or get super excited and you know put a lot of cranking effort into tightening these down. 
Look at that, we have all of our hardware in. Next is to remove our badge for my particular taste. It is so flipping hot out here. All of these drips are literally my face. Like watch, ugh. I mean, that's gross, man. It's like 100 degrees out and humid and it just drips off of me. It is crazy out here. Who does this? Come around to the front, we can take a look at our grill. Much more open. Look at all that buttercup I can see behind there that I couldn't see before. Now, I can see it real good. You wanna see it a little better? Boom, look at that, no more badge. And I am telling you what, I like this look. I think the X-Brace is really gonna pop behind here. And then next we can just kind of move on to our lit logo, which I think I'm gonna put, you know, some, somewhere around this general vicinity. Uh, the best part is you can kind of move that thing around wherever you want and mount it however you want. But, um, you know, I'm gonna keep it kind of kind of clean, kind of classy and put it right about here. So let's hook that thing up. Boom, we've moved on to the lit logo. Now, if you saw our video previously on the new GR86, you will have seen the lit logo and you would have also seen how to install it. But you would have also known that that GR86 is kind of the more difficult one to install it on. You know, with the, the 3D portion of the light itself and the way that that particular logo fits into the front grill, uh, you've got to do some, some dremeling and some things like that to kind of make room for the new logo. This particular one, thank goodness, is much easier to install. In the kit comes a handful of zip ties and on the back of here you can kind of see there is some push through holes for that so we're just going to wrap the zip ties around find a nice little place for all of this to fit good and tight onto the bumper then we'll pull those zip ties tight and it's going to be on. Take a look at that got the back of the logo all tightened up this thing fits pretty good back here and now we just got to clip our zip ties so let's do that a one and a two. So a nice flush cut there. We have our harness. This will connect to our ballast box and we have a quick disconnect. So we don't have to haggle with wiring if we want to continue to take on and off our front bumper. But let's take a look at the front of this thing. Ah, uh, yes, looking fresh. And just in case you're wondering about this like cork looking brown piece here, that's really just a cover. Uh, so that's the last thing we're gonna do. Once we put this on here, we're gonna peel this off and it's gonna be a nice high gloss black finish behind that. Next up for our lit logos is going to be the ballast and wiring. So we're gonna go ahead and clean a little spot back here. And then we are probably gonna mount our ballast box behind the crash bar, kind of out of sight, out of mind. So we have enough length to get to our badge on the front and we also have enough battery length to get to right where we need to be. All right, we have our wires run. Not quite hooked up to the battery yet. I'll go over that in just a second, but we have our Lit Logos ballast box back behind there. I've got the wire just kind of hanging out through here. All of the excess wire is tucked nicely behind our crash bumper piece there. Uh, so this is just enough to kind of hang out so that we can clip it in and unclip it if need be. Now, as far as the wiring goes, we ran that thing up and around there. It was kind of nice, uh, no, no real fuss here, just alongside one of the harnesses. They provide you with a handful of additional zip ties and it was nice. Oh yeah, and I got to use one of the factory clips here for a, uh, what do you call it? What, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh yeah, like a windshield washer. So it just clipped into there, so it kind of blends in with the factory harness. Now, as far as coming up here, Lit Logo suggested that we could connect it directly to the battery and directly to the ground. And since this thing pulls pretty much almost no voltage or amperage, uh, you can leave it on pretty much all the time and it would take weeks to kill the battery. Now, I do plan to hook it directly to a 12 volt source, but if there's one thing I don't like, it's just wires and such just hanging all out. So what I think I'm actually going to do is I am gonna run this wire into the fuse box and we're gonna do an add a fuse to a 12 volt circuit here. Now, Lit Logos also provide you with a three amp fuse in the kit, an inline fuse. But instead of having this just hanging out in the engine bay, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna connect everything with the add fuse into the engine bay and then run this fuse down into the fender well here somewhere so that we don't have this gigantic fuse holder just hanging out in the engine bay. And then with our fuse cover on, you won't have that you know abundance of just wires laying by the battery. Okay, let's take a quick look. If we pop our box 
top off, there is my new line. Uh, kind of a rookie mistake here. Of course, I told you I was going to run an Adafuse here. I go check my toolbox, and I am out of Adafuses. How convenient. Either way, I just wanted to show you that now my power wire is in there. I'll have to grab an Adafuse in a minute. But the important part is down here. So here is my harness now. Here's my ground wire. I went ahead and grounded that. I know that this looks painted, and that's because it is, but once you take this bolt out, both surfaces are raw because they painted this, you know, with the hardware already on it. So that should be a pretty good ground. As far as our additional fuse that's provided, that was run in line. In fact, the fuse holder's right here, and that is a three amp fuse, but it's tucked nice and away into the bumper or behind the fender here, so we don't see that whole jumbly mess of wires by the battery and looks fairly stock. Once again, in typical Florida fashion, the thunderstorms are rolling in. So I'm going to have to go ahead and start reassembling the bumper back onto the car. And, uh, you know, I guess I could probably power it up just from the battery to make sure it works before I put this whole thing back together and we have an issue. So I think I'm going to do that. But for the most part, I'm going to be reassembling this car all the way back, then driving it out to like an AutoZone or O'Reilly's or whatever kind of auto parts place I got around here and getting an add a fuse so that I can finish this with no wiring mess and it'll look pretty much like factory. You ready for the big reveal? You guys ready for some ASMR stuff? You ready? Ooh, how satisfying. Nothing like teal in this thing. So close. There we go. All right, let's take a look at this whole thing. Looking much better, much better. I love that. I think this thing is hot. Not that I didn't like it before, but that was just a nice touch. Of course, the weather's gonna be acting up so we don't get everything to just glisten in the sun, which is probably better off too, because this thing is just covered in the world's sweatiest handprints. It was literally like 100 degrees today, so I'm actually super glad it's gonna rain. But because it's getting dark and cloudy, maybe I can hook up the WRX logo and you'll be able to see it a lot better, although it's not nighttime. So let's, let's fire that thing up, man. You wanna get the whole experience. Let's check it. My goodness, boys, this is super dope. I mean, this thing is just awesome. I can tell you the colors are not coming through on the camera as well as I would like them to, but my goodness, man, this thing pops. I absolutely love it. And I think it is a great, great tie together for this pink bar. All right, guys and girls, that just about wraps up our front end installs for the day. Uh, I'll tell you what, we just beat the rain, so I'm pretty psyched about that. I still have to go out and do my add a fuse. Um, and like always, man, I'm always getting caught in these rainstorms. Like I can't get you, give you a proper reveal uh, on any of these videos, man, because by the time I get done, this raining. What do you want from me? But I will tell you, uh, at the end of this video, past the, uh, you know, the closer, I'm going to show you some, some highlight reels and, you know, some really good stuff of this thing in the daytime. And I think it is really going to pop there. So be sure to stick around till after the video to see all of the like in day shots, the after shots of this fantastic front end conversion. Like always, guys, be sure to hit up importimageracing.com for all of your Subaru needs just like this. I mean, what a fantastic look on like a relatively good budget. Uh, so like I said, for all the parts you'd ever want, for all the parts you'd ever need, be sure to hit up importimageracing.com for all of the best deals on the web and in the world and predominantly on your car. So like always, be sure to hit that like and subscribe and get great content like this. Stick around. We'll catch you guys, you know, on the next one. Mm -hmm.